All right, quick question. If you have a watch that has a 50 meter water resistance, does that mean you can actually take it 50 meters deep in the water? That's what we're going to be talking about today. A lot of times these watches have these different water resistance me uh, measurements, and we're going to look at four different watches that have four different measurements and kind of talk about which, what each one of these um, measurements actually mean. Let's take a look. about uh, water resistance on watches. And this was something that I was kind of really confused about when I first started um, looking into watches and trying to figure out which ones to buy. Um, watches will often come with a uh, rating of how water resistant they are. Uh, for most watches, that's gonna range between uh, 30 meters and um, 200 meters. So in that range are the, the most common ones that you're gonna see. Um, and then there's a, there's a couple of different terminologies for it. So sometimes in, rather than giving it a meter rating, they'll give a, a number of ATMs or atmospheres, um, or they'll give a bar rating. Uh, all of those essentially mean the same thing. So like uh, 30 meters is the same as three ATM or three atmospheres or three bar. So you're gonna see it could be given in any one of those. Um, and you know you might think initially, so that means that I can take, if a, if a watch has a 30 meter water resistance rating, that means I can go up to 30 meters deep with that watch, right? No, probably not at all. If you, do, if you took a, a watch with a 30 meter water resistance and actually dove 30 meters deep, which is pretty deep. I mean, you, I, I'm not a scuba diver, so the most of the deepest I've ever you know, dove down and perhaps um, snorkeling before is, you know, I might have gone down three or four meters. So you would think even that. So like, a, you know, if you're snorkeling or something like that, 30 meters would be more than you would ever need. Um, but that's not actually the way it works. Um, and in fact, for most watches, uh, unless it's like an actual certified diving watch, um, that resist, that water resistance rating that they give it is really just up to the company to kind of give it. There's no like standard that they measure it up against. Um, so it could mean different things for different companies. So it gets even more confusing. Um, so really the, the first thing that you need to do is when you're trying to figure out what the uh, water resistance for a particular watch is, is if the company tells you like, you know, it, so it's, if it's, you know, they might say our ratings mean this. So they'll say like a oh, 30 meter water resistance really means just splash proof, which is what a lot of them are gonna say. Um, so the first thing you wanna do is always look at, look at what the company actually says their ratings mean. Um, but other than that, if they don't give a, a good detailed explanation, we're gonna go through kind of just some basic guidelines um, for you know, sort of what I've found for different watches and some of the research that I've done. Uh, and so I've got four different watches that we're gonna look at today that are at these four different water resistance ratings. Um, so I have one that is a, uh, a 30 meter water resistance. I have a 50 meter water resistance, a 10, uh, 100 meter water re resistance, and then a 200 meter water resistance. So let me go ahead and give, let's just take a quick look at those four watches that we'll talk about today. And then after that, we'll walk through each one and kind of talk about what each of these water resistance really means. Okay, so those are the four watches that we're gonna be looking at. I have them all right back here. Um, 10 points if you comment below and recognize what song that was. We'll see if there's anybody here over 30 like me. Um, anyways, uh, first watch. So we have this uh, Acrobos, and this is a dress watch. Um, very common uh, water resistance for a dress watch is gonna be about 30 meters. And really uh, what that means, uh, 
is that it's, it's basically splash proof. It's, a, it's okay if it's raining outside and it gets a little bit wet. Um, if you're washing your hands and you spill a little bit of water on it while you're washing your hands, that sort of thing, it's going to be okay. If you actually submerge this watch for any significant length of time, probably the water is going to get compromised on it. On this one, uh, there, you know, it's just got a, a pushback or you know, a pressed down uh, case back. Um, the, the crown doesn't screw down, so there's, there's multiple places where water can easily leak into this watch. Um, you definitely would not want to shower with this watch because the steam is actually penetrates the, the watches easier than the, the water would. Um, so a lot of times the steam from the shower will get into the watch and then you'll get condensation underneath the dial and sometimes that can damage or ruin the watch. Uh, so that, that would be the first one. So if it's 30 meter water resistance, for the most part, what that's going to mean is you know, basically you can just get it, you can just get it splashed or, you know, maybe like, you know, one of my big things is um, at family gatherings with my family, uh, sometimes things can get a little wild and people get pushed into the pool at my grandma's house. So that's one of my main concerns is I want to have a watch that can survive me getting pushed in the pool if I'm at a family gathering. So something to consider there. Um, but you might wonder, so, so why does it say 30, 30 meters then? What does that mean? Um, as near as I can tell, what that really is referring to is under perfectly ideal conditions, uh, it could survive, you know, if it was taken down 30 meters and the water was not moving at all, um, it would be able to, to, to maintain the, the pressure and the seal wouldn't be um, over, uh, overcome by the, the pressure of the water at 30 meters. Um, the problem is, is under actual conditions, you know, when you're moving around, so when your arm is moving through the water, um, that's going to increase the pressure on the watch. It's going to increase the pressure of the washer, water coming in. If there's a current, if there's anything, um, you know, all of that is going to overcome the, you know, the seals on, on the watch at the rating that it's given for most of these regular ones. So it's, in other words, it's not under like actual conditions. It's under like a, a perfect, perfectly like almost lab environment that it could potentially, you know, be okay at 30 meters deep. But again, this is really just up to the manufacturer of the watch to determine that. Um, they probably run some sort of tests on their own, um, but for the most part, unless it's a certified diving watch, which we're not even going to get into today, but unless it's a certified diving watch, those numbers that they give on the watches are really just kind of a, a marketing thing that the manufacturers give to give you an idea of, of what it is. And so that's kind of what I think we're going, going through today is what that kind of really means for the most part. So 30 meters, first one if it's a dress watch like this. The other thing on the dress watches, um, and we'll kind of notice as we go on, this has a leather band. So leather band is not waterproof. You, you know, even if you did, even if this had like a 200 meter water resistance and you went swimming with it, um, because it has a leather band, the other thing I'd consider is that, um, you know, it's, it's got a leather band and that's, that's going to be damaged by the water. So you don't really want to take it in the water anyways. So 30 meter water resistance. Um, splashes, light rain, that sort of stuff. Next up, we have this uh, Boulder Expedition. This is a field watch. Um, this one does have a screw down crown, so it gives a little bit of extra water resistance because of that. Um, this one came originally on a canvas strap with a leather backing. Um, I took it off for this uh, testing today and put it on a NATO strap, which is a you know nylon strap, and these are waterproof. They're very comfortable. I really like NATO straps. Highly recommend them. Um, but you know, especially if you're gonna if you're planning on getting your watch wet. Um, you know, look at, you know, maybe a NATO strap or a metal bracelet or a silicone or rubber strap as well are also waterproof. So this one is 50 meters water resistance. Now that means that usually for a 50 meter water resistance watch, um, what that's going to mean is you could submerge it. It's okay. Um, you could probably even do a little bit of swimming in it. You know, if you're in a pool with it, um, it's probably, I, I would feel uncomfortable doing that. I wouldn't like wear this watch intentionally in the pool while swimming. Um, but you could probably get away with it at 50 meters. Um, you definitely wouldn't want to take it into the ocean and really do any like snorkeling or anything like that. Um, but conceivably, 50 meters would be safe for a little bit of light swimming um, with that. Um, so keep that in mind. Uh, next one that we're going to look at, this is the, a Nixon uh, Ranger. Um, this one also came on a leather band, and I've, again, swapped it out to a NATO band for doing the water resistance test. Um, this one's 100 meters. 100 meters is, is pretty safe. This is like, you know, you know for, for almost anything you're going to be normally doing, 100 meter water resistance is going to be kind of, you know, good enough for, for what you're doing. You know, you could take this one swimming in the ocean, no problem. Swimming, you know, at the pool, no problem. A little bit of snorkeling, it's okay. Um, even in the shower, you know, the steam's not going to break through a seal like that. 
Um, so pretty safe for almost any kind of you know normal use that you would use. If you if you get a watch that has 100 meter water resistance and it's you know actually means 100 meter water resistance. I mean sometimes from you know like you know if you're looking at um, like really budget watches from like China and stuff, they might exaggerate their water resistance, and I'd be more careful with that. But if it's from a, a pretty reputable brand, and they say 100 meter water resistance, that's the one that means it's basically going to be safe for almost anything you're going to do. Um, and so I, if I see that, um, I, I'm, I feel pretty safe with it. And that's one of the things I really like about Nixon is, you know, unlike a lot of other fashion watch brands out there, almost all of their watches have that at least 100 meter water resistance. Um, and so for the price that you can often find them at and that I was able to get this, I think they're a great value for that sort of thing. Um, the last watch that we're going to be looking at today, uh, this is an actual dive watch. This one is from uh, Aragon, and it's a new one that I just picked up. This one has a 200-meter uh, water resistance, um, also has screw-down crown, um, and this one's coming on a, uh, on a rubber bracelet, which is waterproof. Uh, so this is the kind of thing that, you know, again, you know, even at this range, you probably not going to want to actually do scuba diving with it. You probably could. You could probably get away with it. It would probably be okay. But, you know, if you're serious about, like, looking for a watch to do scuba diving and, you know, it's something that you might actually even be relying on to time your, um, you know, oxygen or that sort of thing, um, you'd probably want to get one that's got the certification on it that you know is going to be essentially guaranteed up to whatever depth you're looking to dive at. But a 200-meter water resistance for all intents and purposes, um, again, for recreational stuff, you're going to be fine. Um, you know, any kind of snorkeling, anything, you know, light diving in the ocean, um, all of that, it's, it's going to be able to handle it, no problem. And so that's kind of your basic, you know, it's a, usually like, you know, if I'm looking for a diver, like a watch that's a diver, um, I want something that at least has a 200-meter water resistance just because I feel like if it has less than that, Really what it is is just a watch that kind of looks like a diver style watch, but isn't actually it. I, I really, you know, I like to have something that is kind of a little bit more genuine than that. I, you know, I, I don't like things being just for appearances, um, so I can't stand like, you know, little, um, you know, the, the bezels that don't rotate that look like they should or decorative subdials on watches. That kind of stuff really annoys me. And by the same token, a watch that looks like a diver style watch but only has like a 50 meter water resistance, that kind of annoys me too. Even though, you know, for all for most purposes, it would probably be fine for what I normally do. But those are the, the four most common uh, ratings you're going to see on um, on watches. You know, what you, there, there's going to be some that are going to go beyond that. Um, usually they're going to start getting pretty expensive pretty fast if you go in that direction. Um, again, it, you know, a lot of them, the more expensive ones are, if they're a diver watch, they're going to get that certification where um, basically if it says 200 meters, um, you can actually go up to 200 meters, which is really deep. I mean, that's, that's, I mean, I don't know anything about scuba diving, but I don't know how many people actually dive 200 meters. Um, so yeah, so it's kind of confusing because, you know, you, they have all these numbers on the watches, but that doesn't necessarily mean what you would initially think it is. One other thing to keep in mind, um, a lot of watches have, uh, you know, like uh, chronographs or extra buttons, especially digital ones. Um, if you press those buttons underwater, uh, oftentimes that's going to break the seal and that will allow water into your watch. So you really want to avoid pressing any buttons or definitely, you know, obviously you don't want to um, like adjust the time or something underwater. So even if it says it's waterproof or water resistant up to 200 meters, if you, you know, are underwater and you uh, unscrew the crown and then start adjusting the time or something, that's going to that's gonna break the seal and let water into your watch. Same thing if it's a chronograph and you're trying to time it. So if you have a watch that it's a chronograph and it's got good... Um, water resistance and you're thinking, oh, I can time like swimming laps or something, you know, you can do that, but just make sure you're out of the water when you're starting and stopping it. Um, that was a mistake I made with my uh, Pebble smartwatch. I had no idea that that was um, a thing. I knew it had a five atmosphere um, water resistance, so I, was, I would often go swimming with it and it was fine, but I would often be pushing the buttons under the water, um, not realizing that that was breaking the seal and that actually wound up damaging the watch because of that. Um, so just one more thing to keep in mind. Anyways, uh, with that, I hope that kind of gives you some idea when you're looking at watches what those water resistance numbers mean, and hopefully that will give you a clearer idea of the kind of watch that uh, you need or you want for the situations that you're going to be um, going into. Um, I know, again, this, this was stuff that was kind of really confusing to me at first and took me a while to figure out, so hopefully that helps some of you guys who are new uh, in looking at watches to understand that and again, be able to make a better decision on the kind of watch you want to buy. 
But thanks again for watching. As always, appreciate it if you subscribe to the channel and keep putting out videos like this. And yeah, I look forward to seeing you guys next time. I'll talk to you later. Bye.